Good evening, this is Lane Hartzell with the Asia Institute. Tonight we have the third of the series of Asia in Focus with Emmanuel Pastore, Director at the Asia Institute. Hi Emmanuel. Hi, right, good to see you Lane. Uh, well, it's the third of the series and follows our recent paper on Fukushima and uh, I thought uh, we probably should talk about this one in the upcoming uh, Social Innovation Camp in Seoul. Uh, so what I was just going to get you to jump right in and mm -hmm. this exciting development for us at Asia Institute. Yeah, well I've been, since the two of us published our article together in Foreign Policy and Focus, uh, in which we laid out uh, the basic parameters uh, of the Fukushima initiative, which is to say, uh, to create a truly global, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, collaborative effort uh, to muster all the uh, expertise in the world, all the goodwill in the world, and also uh, a lot of man hours from creative and thoughtful people uh, to uh, come up with a real long-term solution to this remarkable crisis, uh, and to do it with the sort of seriousness uh, equivalent to, say, putting a man on the moon, or if you want to reinterpret it to say something the equivalent of a reverse Manhattan Project uh, to deal with uh, extremely serious uh, and totally unprecedented challenges. The um, the disaster has uh, continued. Uh, you know, when things like this leave the news, right. uh, they seem to go away in the public psyche and the public uh, right. thought. You know, but uh, actually, it's a lot worse. Uh, right now are building up to something much worse. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, well the news has, has not been good, and as you know, in terms of the release of radioactive water, the contamination, and the amount of cesium and then strontium more recently, as we talked about in our paper, uh, this is really going to be a serious challenge for us. Uh, and it's, it's something which uh, uh, we know that the Japanese and others have floated ideas, uh, but we're really in uncharted territory. So uh, what we really want to do here at the Age Institute is to sort of put together sort of the most basic uh, framework for how we would build such a global collaborative uh, effort, uh, how we could be truly innovative in it. Uh, and of course, the very first start step is going to be our sole innovation camp uh, event October 4th to 6th, uh, in which we'll bring together the small sort of core group here to explore some formats for how we can share information, how we can, we can build together, how we can get over the, the sort of the, the lump, because we have to realize that this collaborative effort, we have goodwill, we have, you know, now a core of 20, 30 people who are committed, but getting them to work together and realizing how the institutions will the collaborative, the uh, initiative will change over time, but this is really something we really have to work through now to make sure that it's uh, seamless and smooth. Mm -hmm. I want to make one comment about the, the mechanics and the, of course the science there at Fukushima. Our, our paper is, uh, uh, well, it, it paints the picture bad enough, which it is, but it's contingent upon the fact that another, or contingent upon another earthquake not happening, right. or another tsunami or typhoon not happening. Um, mm -hmm. Last week, both happened. An earthquake and a typhoon That's correct. Uh, hit the area, uh, which would make our paper uh, obsolete uh, on the uh, too <laughs> soft end. Uh, can you talk uh, a little bit about that? Yeah, so, so I... Uh, there are many grim things that I could talk about, and I actually I, I, I'd rather not stress the, the grimness. I just I hope that people out there understand just how serious this issue is, uh, and that we really need to come together uh, quickly. That this is not something we can put off for another six months or a year. Uh, we really need it to come together, uh, and it, I think it's going to be something truly uh, exciting. I mean, it's both. It's threatening, but it's exciting. And that's where the analogy to the Manhattan Project comes in, you know. It's not the same 
in terms of the context, uh, but it's the same in the sense that we have a serious threat uh, and we have to try and muster all the possibilities. Uh, but it's also different in that it's not just uh, it's collective intelligence, right? It's not just getting together Feynman and, and Oppenheimer, right? And your proposal just uh, a month ago was to, to prepare a white paper mm -hmm. on the issue, so it's not just the article, but the, the entire team that you're talking about. Right. And that's what we've been working on. I, I think you can see it as sort of a parallel. On the one hand, we're preparing the white paper, which is what we need when we approach policymakers, you know, political figures, and people who might grant funding. This is a very real aspect. But on the other hand, working from the social innovation camp forward, we're actually sort of building in terms of people and structures for exchange and working together. Uh, and you, I should ask, uh, ask you, Lane, because you've been talking to our whole team. W what has been your impression in terms of the, the commitment and the ideas that people have been putting forth? Yeah, the, the, the team is, is quite excited. Uh, really because people feel like that they're participating in something that's important right uh, and it's and it's involving you know communications with experts and then uh, peer dialogue peer review uh, the team we, we can call it a convergence team because there's people from all walks of life right not just professors and uh, scientists uh, there are people that are doing many different things in society so the idea is the open reasoning and uh, when people have a chance to get involved, they do. And uh, people come with also different levels of knowledge. But that's okay because uh, within an information-rich group, which we call a convergence group, uh, it, it brings you up to that level automatically. I think this is a defining characteristic of the Asia Institute, uh, is that we're actually giving people an opportunity to participate in something which is truly meaningful. We're not, you know, pontificating to them, uh, but we want them to be part of our team and to offer, let's say, going up and coming down, uh, all sorts of perspectives. Uh, and that we're we're very serious about this. So if you can join our team, I say to everybody uh, who might be watching, uh, we really want your expertise and to play a role. Uh, and as we said in our paper uh, that, I, that the two of us wrote together, um, things like figuring out the flow of radiation or different aspects of how to deal with the logistics or even the philosophical and ethical aspects of dealing with this problem, um, there's a role for you in there. Uh, and we really want you uh, to be working with us. We're not asking you to throw money at us, as many people do. Uh, we're asking for you to uh, to be involved because that's really what we value. Yeah, the the group can get uh, quite big, quite large. Um, that's exactly right. That's in fact our intention. It can be thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and the tasks. And this is the whole point, I think, of the the the, the P2P uh, engagement is uh, the task can be broken down. There's, there's no part of this uh, that we can't break down to some degree and, and spread out over a large number of people. That's the whole point of something like the Galaxy Zoo and other experiments in network science is to say, by collecting together thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, if the architecture is, is uh, sufficient, uh, you can amass an incredible amount of uh, capability yeah, the Galaxy Zoo is a good model because what it does is the, the scientists at uh, mm. you know, different laboratories around the world are putting up uh, information online which are basically just pictures of the sky and uh, those little fuzzy things, you know, galaxies, which are actually quite huge and far away, uh, people sitting at home get trained and they go and look and they, they identify galaxies. And uh, on their website, they said they weren't expecting much response, but within the first 48 hours, they had millions of uh, uh, mm -hmm. responders. So we hope that this can happen. That's, what, that's exactly right. That, that's what we want. Uh, we really want your help out there. Uh, and uh, there, there's a place for you in this, which is to say, even if it's not to say, 
with expertise in nuclear power, uh, we have to you know, convince people, come up with new ideas. Uh, this, the very question, I think the most fundamental question we're going to deal with here is not an issue of technology and technological expertise, right? But rather, how do you coordinate all these different people and interest groups together, different expertise at different levels, uh, and how do you uh, do that while at the same time convincing people who are not experts of the importance of this effort? Uh, that's an incredible talent, and it's not a talent that nuclear engineers have. Right? It's, it may be a talent that, that you have out there, and so that's why uh, it's, we're, we're so interested uh, in having you join us uh, in this effort. Let me uh, close with just a uh, question and statement about the, the social innovation camp, because this also involves youth, it involves uh, some friendly competition, uh, mm -hmm. something that we're quite excited about at Asia Absolutely. Institute. Yeah. Uh, can you make just a few more comments about that? And uh... Well, so uh, basically this is a uh, social innovation camp. Uh, it may be a reversal of roles. I mean, I, I happen to be, you know, we're a little bit older, uh, but some of the younger people are much more adapt, uh, adapt at using new technologies, and this is going to be a chance for us to work with a variety of experts, particularly in the issue of how to set up applications for the exchange of information uh, to sort of get us in a way set up so we can do this effectively. So uh, I think for those who will be there, and uh, we hope to have a good solid group, uh, that it will be a real opportunity for us to show uh, how open we are to say we're not here to lord over people as the older guys. Uh, but we're actually there to learn uh, from younger people, from our students, uh, about how we can take advantage of these incredible opportunities. Uh, there's, there's a famous phrase uh, from Albert Einstein, uh, who I think almost is sort of like the, you know, the patron saint of the Asia Institute. Uh, and he said, after the uh, first uh, atomic uh, uh, bomb uh, uh, detonation, experimental detonation, he said, everything has changed in the world except our way of thinking. Uh, and I think this is a very, very profound comment, that the world we live in has changed absolutely, even from what it was, say, five or ten years ago. Uh, but we're trapped in this way of thinking in terms of conventional warfare and international relations and things like this that are totally out of whack with the climatic, the, the climate issues, the technological uh, changes that are taking place around us. Uh, and I, I really feel that young people, in a way, because they have experienced these changes from an earlier age, are faster at picking up the opportunities and in grasping how the world has changed and how we can find potential uh, and, and hope uh, in the midst of what I think is a very, very serious situation. What you just mentioned is one of the beauties of peer-to-peer, -peer, that peer-to-peer uh, -peer can mean uh, children to adults, to experts, and experts down to children. Uh, Absolutely. In the case of, of the smartphones and the the apps and the technology. Whenever I want to know something about this, I just get online and write to a student or put it into one of those uh, chat rooms or something where, where these people are talking. And usually, you get usually they can respond uh, almost immediately with the correct information. And these people are under twenty, and they because they have that right. They they have. I'm not saying anybody has a monopoly on anything, uh, but it's that combination of skills uh, that bring bring it out. I mean, to give the example, say, of, of Galaxy Zoo, right? So if you had a set of, say, satellite images, right, of the Fukushima area, and you're scanning them to try and find changes in concentration of radiation at a, at a low, let me say, like within 100 meters or uh, uh, square kilometer or so, uh, you have to scan over these every day to see what changes there are. PhDs are not good at this. Who might be good at it? Someone who's a, a borderline uh, autistic, 
might be good at this, right? So uh, you might have this sort of reversal to say someone who's autistic or maybe who's deaf or who has some other challenges might be the, the person who's able to do this job, this critical job for us. So I, I really uh, think it's a tremendous opportunity for us. The, uh, in, in Korea, it's, since the Asia Institute's located uh, mm -hmm. there, uh, in Seoul and, and all over Korea, there are these PC bongs, and this is something that someone outside of Korea wouldn't know about, and maybe the Chinese. <laughs> yes. uh, PC bongs are places where mostly youth will go and sit for hours and hours and play games with their friends, mm -hmm. and there's a tremendous amount of um, intellectual know-how right there that could plug into what we're talking about in our paper. I think that that's, we should be totally open and we will find leaders, as is always a time uh, in moments of crisis, that we'll find leaders where we didn't expect to find leaders. Uh, and I, I say that in terms of a humble attitude on our part, but I also say it to you out there uh, as an as a encouragement and also as a challenge uh, that you in your way may be the critical person who can help us to pull this together. Well, thanks a lot, Manuel, and uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime when I'm up there in Seoul. Almost every day, either by internet or otherwise, uh, and as we start to put together this uh, coalition, uh, I think uh, we'll be uh, standing next, next to each other as we'll be standing next to all our friends and supporters around the world. Okay, all the best. Good night. Thank you. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.